right, what is up everyone? First off, thank you so much for clicking on this video, taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I truly appreciate it. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving my review of Comp 1131, I think I got that code right, uh, course, which is an introduction to programming course offered at TRU. I did my computer science degree online through TRU, had a good experience, so I thought I would uh, you know, review these courses and uh, to help people out who are also in the same place that I was not too long ago in which they're pursuing their degree through TRU. Now, what we're going to be talking about uh, as far as, you know, in relation to the course, I'm going to rate the course on three different metrics. One is going to be difficulty. So how difficult was the course? I'll rate that on a scale of one to five, one being, you know, very easy, five being very difficult. Second metric I'll use is practicality. So I'm currently employed as a professional software engineer at a Silicon Valley tech company. And uh, I'm going to talk about when I talk about practicality, I'm going to talk about Okay, how useful is this content, uh, con the content you learn in this course really in relation to your day-to-day -day work? Next, I'm gonna talk about the usefulness of the material. What I mean by that is the material that they actually give you in the course, like the textbook or other resources they'll link you to. How useful is that really? And does it really help you to absorb the material of the course? And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's dive right into it. And uh, just one thing I want to, uh, rather two things I want to point out. A, I am sick, so, you know, if I have a runny nose or cough, uh, just apologies in, in advance for that. And second, I do have some notes in front of me. If I'm looking down at any point, I'm just looking at my notes. Okay, so what's the goal of this course, right? Let's touch on that real quick. And the scores, by the way, the, you know, regarding difficulty, practicality, will all be at the end of the video. So if you're interested in that, just uh, skip to the end. I will have timestamps in the description as well. So the goal of this course is to understand fundamental programming and use of Java. That's very important, I think. Apply basic object-oriented programming concepts. That's also very important. Design, develop, document, well-structured programs using software engineering principles. Again, I think that's important. Use problem-solving skills to write software. Extremely important. Identify a real-world problem that can be addressed through the design and development of a novel computer application. Very important. Reflect on and apply informed conclusions to build on the knowledge gained from earlier applications and feedback received from faculty and peers to build more complex applications as time progresses, right? So I basically copied that from the TRU website. Uh, you know, so these are the learning objectives they laid out. This is what you learn in the course. And, uh, you know, again, I think all that stuff is important and practical. Now let's touch on the actual material you receive with the course, right, to help you learn these things. So when I talk about material, again, I'm talking about things like the textbook and uh, things that they'll link you to during the course. So you get the textbook, right? You get PowerPoint slides, which are largely based on the textbook as well. You get PDFs, you know, so if I'm rem remembering correctly, they were like PDFs, some internally created, uh, which, you know, had information that you needed to learn. Uh, there were external lectures, but the external lectures did not include video. They were audio lectures, but they were interactive. So they would have like buttons and stuff on a website along with audio and the audio would be the lecture. There were external readings, so they'll link you to readings on other websites to help internalize the concepts. There were quizzes. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly here as well, there were external quizzes they'd link you to, but those external quizzes did not count for marks. They were just kind of like, you know, help you understand things. And then there were quizzes in the actual program as well. And those quizzes were actually for marks. So those were taken through the TRU Moodle application. And then there were homework assignments, uh, which they called labs, right? Now, one thing I want to point out about this material here, and this is, of course, going to be a biased opinion, right? A subjective opinion. But when I started this course, right, when I started my degree, I had an absolute garbage attention span. That's just the truth of it. You could not ask me to sit down and read something for very long, right? I liked visuals. I needed, like, video lectures. I needed interaction. And um, that was kind of the first unique experience I had with online degrees. You don't really get a lot of that, right? Or at least with a TRU one, that was, I wasn't getting that compared to an on-campus experience, right? So all these resources I've uh, uh, listed out, just about all of them, are text-based resources. And again, my attention span was so bad at that point when I was doing this course that asking me to sit down and read things and actually internalize it was, uh, you know, near impossible. So for someone with my learning style, I didn't have a good experience um, using this material. And I was hoping for more like video-like material. And this is something I hope they can accommodate for people, you know, like me who learn like me in the future. Now I'm at a point, you know, now I have a much better attention span. 
And maybe if I go back now, I would like the material more just because I do have the ability to sit down, read and internalize. But again, back then my attention span, you know, I know for a fact was absolute garbage. And that is also why I didn't like these resources too much personally. Now, next thing I'm going to touch on is how long this course took me, right? So this course took me six months. There's a few reasons for that. And I'm going to touch on those because I do think you can complete it quicker. A, this was all new content, right? I was pivoting from a criminology degree. I didn't have like a STEM type of background or something like this. So this very, um, you know, programming is more of a STEM thing. Like, uh, you know, you need kind of those mathematical brain, like logical thinking type skills. And I didn't have those when I was going into the degree. So just jumping into a programming course without any sort of STEM background, I found very difficult and trying to learn these things, you know, it was just challenging. Now, at this point, of course, I'm at a, I'm at a point where if I took that course now, it would be a walk in the park, right? But at that point, just ramping myself up on those computer science concepts was extremely, extremely difficult. So that's one reason it took me that long. Another reason was I was working at this point. So I did have a part time job that I was doing and I was commuting all the way to downtown Vancouver, which is like one hour uh, away from where I'm at. And the other thing is, I was also, I'm pretty sure I don't remember exactly, uh, but because the timelines are a little fuzzy, but I think I was still in my criminology program at this point as well. So I do have a crim degree. And near the end of my crim degree, I signed up for my CS degree. So there was like a point of overlap where I was doing both degrees. And I think I was taking this course during that point of overlap. And that's also why it took me long because I was focusing on, you know, multiple courses, juggling my crim courses, and then my computer science courses. And the last reason I believe this took me as long as it did was because the exam for this was in person. So this was before kind of COVID and everything went remote. Uh, late 2019, this was if I'm remembering correctly. So, uh, or early 2020, somewhere around that point. And uh, yeah, so I went in in person to do my exam, right? And when you go in, in person, of course, you have to like work out your schedule. And so I, I might have been at a point where I already had completed all the other assignments, but just getting to the point of taking the exam took me a few more weeks because I had to align everything, align my schedule to a point uh, where I was free when the exam was being offered. Now, I will not be rating the professor. The reason I'm not going to be rating the professor is that I think that's largely pointless. Um, and the reason I think it's pointless is because professors uh, differentiate but between courses, right? Like the same course can have multiple professors. So I may get professor A, you sign up, you may get professor B. Uh, so it won't be like a consistent metric that we can track. That's why I'm just not going to bother including it. And next thing I want to talk about is resources that I found useful. So I mentioned earlier that the material that TRU had provided was minimally useful to me. So now I want to touch on what I found useful to hopefully help you out if you're in a similar place where, uh, you know, you think that the material TRU provided isn't helping you too much. So firstly, YouTube, incredible resource. I, I, again, at that point, I, I didn't have the attention span to sit down and read. So for a visual learner, incredible resource, uh, multiple videos on YouTube about Java, talking about programming, uh, you know, introduction programming concepts. Uh, those helped me out greatly, right? And uh, if you, uh, you know, if you're interested in specific videos I use, please leave a comment below. I can definitely uh, try to dig them out and, uh, you know, reference uh, those somewhere in the description or something. So if that would be useful, let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. The next resource I want to talk about, this was one of the most useful resources for me. And th this resource, I believe, is the main reason I actually got a good mark in this course. Because when I was uh, starting this course, again, things were challenging, right? And uh, I was afraid that I might even fail the course but I actually ended the course with an A. And I believe this resource is a major, major reason I was able to do that. This is called MOOC.FI, M-O-O-C dot F-I. This is basically will take you to uh, a website, which is a website of a public university, and they have offered their courses to the public for free, right? So these are a few of their introduction, programming, introduction to programming courses, and they've offered them for free. And their introduction to Java programming course is just incredible. In my opinion, it's practical. They'll walk you through things and then they'll get you to actually write code. So it's like, you know, they give you a little bit of uh, prompt text prompt or whatever, and then they actually get you to get hand, a lot of hands on experience throughout the course. And that hands on experience was a difference maker for me to actually start internalizing concepts. When I was just reading the textbook, you know, it, like with TRU, they get you to read the textbook and then after you've done a bunch of reading, then, you know, you do exercises and stuff. So I felt like there was this disconnect 
Whereas with this MOOC course, it was very, it flew a lot better in my opinion, where it was like, they'll give you a little bit of reading and then they'll jump you into exercises fairly quickly. And there was less of kind of this wait time between do this big chunk of reading and then do an exercise. It was like, do a little bit of reading, a little bit of exercise, a little bit of reading, a little bit of exercise. So highly, 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 highly recommend this course. Definitely check it out if you're struggling with the concepts in this uh, TRU course at all. This Taking this MOOC course made the TRU course significantly easier for me. So now to get to the score, right? Uh, the ratings. So for difficulty, I put this at a five out of five. Now, is this the hardest course you're gonna take during this degree program? Not even close, right? There's harder courses, uh, especially near the tail end of the degree, harder courses come up. But the reason I put this at a five out of five is because I'm trying to imagine myself right when I was at that point of starting the degree. Like if I look at the course now, again, this is a walk in the park for me. But when I was just starting the degree and it's like, you know, the resources that TRU has provided me aren't helping me at all. And um, I don't have any previous programming experience, no real STEM type of experience. So I'm really, really struggling to understand these concepts. And when I put myself in that scenario, in those shoes, um, I believe this is a five out of five. I thought maybe I'd rate this a four, but honestly, I'm gonna go with a five uh, based on the experience I had. Next, let's touch on practicality. How useful is the material really? I also gave this a five out of five. You know, this is giving you basic introductory programming concepts that are gonna serve you even if you know you move forward and you don't use Java, you end up using JavaScript, you end up using Python or whatever programming language you use throughout your career. This is teaching you basic introductory programming concepts that'll serve you well throughout your career. This is a practical course, this is a useful course. I, I'm confident rating this a five out of five. Next, the material. <laughs> so maybe, maybe my opinion before has made it clear what I think of the material. Uh, again, bias, right, because now if I look at the material, I have a better attention span. Maybe I rate it much higher. I think it's awesome. But back then I couldn't be bothered to read through this dry, dry content, right? Like I, I just couldn't do it. So I think the material is very one-sided in the sense that it serves a certain group of people. Again, people who have that attention span, who are able to uh, do re read more efficiently and who kind of have that skill developed already, they might love the material and it serves those people very well. I just don't think it serves a wide array of people. And that's what I would have loved to see is something that kind of, uh, or material that feeds to different learning styles. So regardless of the learning style you have, you feel that you can find usefulness in the material. And due to what I believe is one dimensionalness, if that's a word, of the, of the material, I'm gonna rate the material a 1.5 out of five. And uh, yeah, that is my review of Comp 1131. I hope you found that useful. This is my first time trying to do a review of the course. So I thought back to, you know, when I first started doing the course and thought what kind of information would I found useful. And I put all that in this video. Uh, so that's, you know, my train of thought. But if there's anything that you would have liked to see in this video or in the review that wasn't there, please leave a comment, reach out to me, and I can be sure to add it into the next videos. Um, you know, depending on the amount of feedback I get, of course, uh, you know, if there's 20 different things, adding 20 things to a video is gonna make it absolutely massive, right? And I still want to have fairly short videos that people can digest easily. Uh, so if I get a lot of feedback, I'm going to take the ones that have kind of like the most votes and add those metrics on to future reviews. But overall, definitely hope you liked the video. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. Peace.